there, fellow readers, and welcome to the Weirdo's Guide to Wordying, your destination for book and writing talk and for a bit of strain. I'm your host, SC, coming after you in a tutu and leg warmers to talk about The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. The Library at Mount Char is a contemporary fantasy about a modern American family of librarians that falls apart in the absence of their father. Except it's not. What I mean is, this is a story about a group of orphans taken into the home of a man they call Father and tasked each one to become experts in a catalog from Father's highly unorthodox library. So Father's catalogs include things like death, medicine or healing, war, and our main girl Carolyn's catalog is languages. We follow Carolyn as she and her now grown fellow librarians go out on a search for their powerful, dangerous, and godlike father, who by the way raised them under often brutal conditions. But finding him means interacting with the world outside of the library they've been isolated within all their lives. And the clash that ensues is violent and spectacular and even sometimes funny. For instance, David, the librarian you probably wouldn't want to run into in a dark alley or a well-lit anywhere, spends much of the story dressed in little more than blood and a tutu. So The Library of Mount Char is one of those books that throws you into the story without much explanation or exposition, which I tend to like. It lends this immediate mystery and propulsion to the story, so right when you get into the book, you're off and running. It's not always easy to execute this sort of method, especially with a story that involves such an unfamiliar and alien culture. In this case, it would be the Palapi culture in which the librarians were raised. But Hawkins' execution was pretty stellar, I have to say. I love learning more about each librarian's often heinous education under their father's rule, and figuring out how it came to be that they developed into these somewhat strange and frightening creatures. While I had a sense of what was unfolding as a result of uh, father's disappearance. I had to keep picking up on clues to get the full picture, and even then the story didn't end the way I expected it to. There were some areas of the book where the exposition did sort of take me out of the story, especially later in the book when some of the backstory had to be revealed and it became a kind of questions and answers type scene, but there was plenty of action and mishaps and showing rather than telling to make up for those rarer moments. I didn't even really know who to root for as I read, which is strange for me because I tend to gravitate toward character-driven plots and I get a lot of my satisfaction out of rooting for one character and anticipating the downfall of another, but that's not always the case. Hawkins is really good at giving you flawed characters. I wouldn't even know who to call a hero in this book. Even the obvious hero, the war veteran, has his follies and his bad sides. I mean, there's a lot of what I construed as psychopathy in these characters. I mean, warranted psychopathy, but there you go. I must have a soft spot for the friendly psychotic because I came to like a lot of the librarians, other than David. David is a no-no. I actually developed a lot of respect for Carolyn's character. Her character really resonated with me. Not because I'm a friendly psychotic, most people say I'm not friendly at all, but because she's so maniacally driven and monkish in her ambition. There's so much I loved about this book. It's easily high on my list of favorite reads this year, and it makes me want to go out and look for some more contemporary fantasy. Speaking of which, my current reads are An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir, um, A Tale of Highly Unusual Magic, that's a middle grade read by Lisa Papadimitriou, Let's Pretend This Never Happened, a mostly true memoir by Jenny Lawson, 
and I just finished uh, Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare, which is book one of her Infernal Devices series. So check back for more about those books. For now, pick up a copy of The Library at Mount Char. You won't regret it. Unless you don't like violence and gore and dark themes, then you might. I've included a link to the book in my show notes below and also links to the other books mentioned here. And I also have information on where you can find me around the internet. Thank you so much for joining me again at the Weirdo's Guide to Word Eating and I'll see you next time. Bye!